Welcome to Mermarinick. We're in the Palmer Gym today for the boys' basketball game between New Rochelle and Mermarinick. This is Rob Moretti, I'm Robert Reamer. What are the keys to the game, Rob? Well, uh, these two teams are very closely matched. They've fared about as well uh, this season. They have very similar records, so uh, two cross-town, more or less, rivals. School is only separated by a few miles, so it uh, should be a fun matchup. A lot of fans should be showing up. And uh, as far as the game itself goes, both teams, uh, they're just going to have to shoot well, play good defense. These games often end up really close between Mamaronik and New Rochelle, so it should be a good matchup today. All right, thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Mamaronik High School, the home of the Tigers. Tonight's feature is a Section 1 Class AA Boys Basketball League matchup with the Huguenots of New Rochelle and your home team, Mamaronik Tigers. will be Alex Lanny from Mermarinick. And he'll win it. Goes to Jerry McMullen, and he will pass it to Matt Mazansky. Mazansky. Brian Orvey Levins. Mazansky. McMullen. He'll shoot. Just missed it. Orvey Levins. Just missed it again, and it's going to be covered now by New Rochelle, just barely, but they do get it. Point guard, Vincent Bracy. Take it off, get the ball back now, and... Bracy. Good passing here by New Rochelle. Yeah, definitely thus far. That's been one key you have seen, and a jump ball. Lanny thought he had it by himself, but there was a New Rochelle player clinging onto it at the bottom. And New Rochelle came out looking crisp. No points to show for it yet. Racy now knocked away. That was knocked away by Jerry McMullen. Same Bracy passes it to to like Nosu. Bracy still plenty of time left on the shot clock, taking their time now, and the shot is going to be taken and just missed. That was Joseph Clark who just missed it, and Robert. Both of these there. both of these teams getting a lot of good looks. They just can't get the ball into the bucket so far. No, they can. Uh, some. Unlucky rolls thus far, I would say. You know, it doesn't always go in, even if you do get it on target. And 
Sansky throws it in. Jerry McMillan to get the layup, just missed another close shot, and just missed again. Lanny just gonna reset it. Mazansky, point guard, will reset it for Mermarinick. Whistle gonna be called in. I guess there's a foul away from the play. Yeah, it's surprising to see almost two minutes through this game, the team able to get that ball through the hoop, but I'm sure that'll be changing soon. Yeah. A low scoring game might be in hand. These are two teams that do pride themselves on defense. Foul is uh, called. It's on the Marinick. They'll be inbounded by Malik Burks for New Rochelle. Center gonna inbound it. He gets it in solidly and a wild shot just missed again. And another jump ball. Kalik Nosu just missed that one. And Mizanski now throwing in from Marinick. Just finds Lanny. Here's Rochelle employing the full court press in the early going. Yeah, that has been, I would say, part of the key maybe to their defensive success. But Lanny, Lanny will put in the bucket, and there goes the scoreless tie we've had. 5.52 left to go in the first quarter. Shoots a three, and that's a center, everybody. Just missing it. There's Malik Burks taking the shot. And two shots are gonna be taken by Kalik Nosu. Nosu has been one of the highlights today thus far for New Rochelle. He'll Try take his first shot. Tie this game back up if he can. And well, it cut it at least to one. 5.32 left to go in the first quarter. <laughs> Missed it, but rebounded, and good. That was Joseph Clark for New Rochelle, putting in the bucket. Something went wrong in the rebounding position there for Marinick. Jerry McMillan will take it up and find wide open the Tiger. That was Kaden. Nice pass up. there by McMullen. Yes, he saw the two on one there and he converted. Knocked away. And now the Tigers have numbers and offensive foul is going to be called. He jumped right into him. McMillan can't believe it. But the refs did think so. Coach Tyrone Carver Jr. in his seventh year is livid on the sideline for Mermaid. You know, he's got to like the effort he saw there from McMullen on the steal and then trying to drive it down. Just drove it a little too hard in the ref's eyes. Yeah, definitely. I think that was a better defensive play for New Rochelle than it really was McMillan's fault, though. Drill in now and takes a shot. That was good. Chris Elefenti. Now they got inbound and they finally do. Find Lanny. Go to McMullen. McMullen. Don't want to step too many times. And it's going to be stolen away underneath. Now in transition. Rosu. Threw it away. Recovered by Orgulevix. And he'll shoot. Good. Yeah. Marinick now takes a 6 5 lead. 4.08 left to go in the quarter. Oh, that was a great pass in there to Holden, but he just couldn't convert. And Marinick will get the ball back again and dribble it down court for a new possession. Jerry McMullen for three. Good. 9 5. And that erupts the crowd here in Marinick. Clark 
in double team. Tries to knock it off a tiger and he does. It was a crafty play by him on the side there. He was in a situation, but he was able to get out of it with that play. You got two guys guarding you like that. That's the only thing you can do is throw it off and hope it goes out of bounds. Exactly. So you're gonna have to pull inbound it. It's like Ben Kalish has checked in from a Marinick. Yes, he's a young sophomore. Definitely gonna have a bright future from a Marinick. McMillan. Tight pressure. And to shoot the three. Just missed it. Rebounded by Lanny. Zansky picks it up. Oh, finds Lanny. Perhaps a little luck involved on that one, but it works out anyway. It's 11 5 for Marinick. Dribble's in now, and shot was taken. Rebounded. And someone tipped it in for New Rochelle. Had three guys down there. All right, hands going at the ball and then found the bucket. You know, I couldn't tell you who scored those two points. <laughs> could have been one of three or four different guys. It may have been. It uh, could have been a Meredith yeah. player uh, by accident. Two who players knows? might have touched it. But the points were scored. So 242 left to go in the first quarter. Timeout. We're back here on LMC TV Varsity Sports. Mullen unbound it. And that is going to be to Mazansky. Mazansky takes it up. Gets some glass and makes it. 13 7 for Marinette. Some quick play now. Taken up by Elefante. Fonte. He found Joseph Clark underneath, but he threw it away. Miller inbounded Mazansky, who just got a quick bucket a moment ago. That time he'll pass the potential drive in, and they gotta get over the timeline. They will. Kalish with the ball now. Tries to dribble in, finds wide open man. That's Orgulevix, and he makes it. Great assist by Ben Kalish. Ryan Orgulevix, and they make it a 16 7 lead. Oh, but that was a big shot. That was by Sean Finner for. New Rochelle, which will cut the lead to only seven points. Early in this one, Marinick's playing some very aggressive defense, trying to jump some pass routes and everything. Yeah, and New Rochelle is a very talented team, so this is definitely a start to be proud of for Marinick. Mazansky will take it up, and passes McCourt. So Ari Levick's gonna get to McMullen for three. Good! 19-9 for Marinick. Everything's dropping. It's easy to say early in this one, the star from Marinick has been Jerry McMullen. Yes, definitely. Pass it out. And that was Birch trying to make it, and it's going to be Marinick ball. Off of a Huguenot. For the Tigers, Ben Kalish is going to inbound it now. He'll find Mazansky, no one really contesting that. Jordy Levix. And going to get it over the timeline. Still plenty of time to do it. Jordy Levix gets it now. Full court press for New Rochelle, as we know before. Has been giving the Tigers a bit of trouble, but also in transition, they have gotten a couple of buckets too that may have not come from it. And Rilevis finds Kalish underneath. Kalish shoots. Offensive foul is called. No, they'll call it travel now. Then Kalish traveled, trying to make some room in there. Well, a little disagreement at first on what he did wrong, but uh, it appears the refs do agree he did something wrong. Yeah, definitely. Either way, it's going to New Rochelle. Inbound it now. Elefante will take it up. Fonte crosses it. Passes up the shot. Now back to Elefante. Elefante shoots. Good. 
So Mermarinick now only up by eight. 35 seconds left to go in the game. Oh, and he finds Len. Excuse me, no, that's that's going to be Caden and thrown away. Irby Levick's a little too excited there. Nearly worked, but just tipped away like a cornerback. And shoots the three. Good. That was Sean Fenner. Point guard making it, and now time is racing. 12 seconds left to go, and a timeout's going to be called now. Or no, was that a foul? I think that was a foul. Yeah, it was. Someone set a pick or something. So 19-14 now. 10.8 seconds left to go. Still enough time to get a full possession in. And uh, New Rochelle looks like they're gaining a little bit of momentum here at the end of this first quarter. Yeah, I, I, that was a poor start for them, but they have caught, crawled back into this game. So Ryan White is going to throw it in now for Mermanic. And we'll get it to Mazansky. Mazansky dribbles. Six seconds left to go. He's fouled. I think I call that shooting foul. They will, and he'll take two shots. Hit the deck on that one, but uh, yeah, he, looks like he, he earned, really his, earned his shots. His first free throw. Nope. On uh, that one, he make it 20 to 14. There's six seconds left to go. Really went down court quickly there, only in about 4.5 seconds. Can he make a six point lead from Mermarinick? Good on that one. The inbounded. And it's to Nwosu. To shoot. Crazy shot was taken by Elefante, but he just missed. And at the end of the first quarter, Mermarinick leads 20 to 14. We'll be right back. We're back here on LMC TV Varsity Sports. Second quarter is going to start now. It's 2014 Marinick Tigers. And you know, Rob, New Rochelle is pretty much a walking distance from Marinick. So these teams do have some high tensions. A lot of the players probably know each other. And a lot of the fans from the New Rochelle side are here today, which is leading to capacity probably in a couple hundred. Yeah, Palmer Gym rarely sees a crowd like this on a Wednesday night. Inbounded now by Burtz and Fonte will take it up. El Fonte. Pass it out. Finds Burtz. Back to Finer. And Finer quickly double team. El Fonte will take it in and just missed it. And is it off a Tiger player? It was not, apparently. And it's going to be my Marinick ball. Will Parkinson checked into the game now from the Marinick. Mullen checks back in, Oregon Levitz takes a seat. Mm -hmm. First time today, it seems like they're not gonna press nearly as much, but now they do. And Zansky will take it up to McMullen. He's had a huge night today. And this is a Wilpa. And Ryan White for three, just missed it. He, I saw him in practice earlier today though, and he was nailing those, so he's definitely capable of that shot. That's probably why they he dialed it up. Maybe he thought he was on some kind of a roll. Yeah, shoots for three. Viner just misses, but it's rebounded by Burtz underneath, and he's gonna shoot two. You can cut the lead to potentially four if you can make both of these free throws. First one is good. So it's 20 to 15 now. Can they make it 20 to 16? Great free throw shooting by Malik Burtz. And that cuts the lead to only four. Marinick led at, I think, 10 at one point, so they've slowed it down a bit. But Mullen trying to get them back to that double figure lead, and it's going to be. Grown, he tried to get it to Will Parkinson. It's a wide receiver on the football team, but he couldn't handle that. And shoots, just missed it. Rebounded by Mazansky. Mazansky, Mermarinick, quick flow to McMillan. Draws the foul. 
Finally, they didn't call that an offensive foul earlier in the game. He was disgusted by one that was very similar to that. Well, he got the call that time. He's been playing hard all game. Sometimes he'll get the call. Sometimes it'll work against you. Yeah. First shot. It's good. So 21-16, Marinick. There's 6.39 left to go in the second quarter. For those of you who don't know, they do play four quarters. Still plenty of time left in this game. Second one to be taken. And that's good too. So 22-16 now, Marinick. To the Burtz. That's a finer. Burtz. Find Elevante, and it's tipped by Lanny in there, and he'll throw it. And foul taken by Mermarinik, but that whole entire possession seemed ugly for New Rochelle, so I think they're glad to be able to reset things and inbound it again. Taylor's back in as Parkinson get a break. Mm -hmm. Malik Burt will put it in now, and uh-oh, wide open for three and takes it. Oh, Fonte, you don't want to leave him right up there. That's almost like a free throw, except for three. And it's 22-19 for Marinick's lead. That was once 10. It's now only three. Big momentum shift here. Zansky takes it up. Good. And again, they're going to call him a blocking foul, so it'll be and one. You know, really the key to that call is whether the feet are moving or not, or if you're under, well, they're supposed to be a, a semicircle there. They do that in the NBA, but it's not there. So it's really up to the official, but if you're right under the basket, you're not gonna be able to draw a charge. And uh, that time, you didn't draw it. That right there is just what Marinick needed with New Rochelle gaining momentum. Yeah, get three of their own, and they have a potential. They have a shot to do it here. Not going to deliver, but still a big two, and it's 24-19 for Marinick Tiger. Be taken up by Elefante. Finer, Burks, Fonte. If I get into the two players underneath, they haven't seen the ball much, and it'll be taken by Finer, just missed it, rebounded by Ben Kalish, and you'll get it for Alex Lanny. Lanny will pass it. Mazansky, Ryan, 411, wide open for three. Just missed it. Ben Kalish had the rebound, but it was taken away from him. Great effort by Elfonte, and he finds Burks and just missed it. Oops. That was a wide open layup, and Millen will take it. Anyone want to slow down right now? This is going really fast, and Elefante will put it in. And all of a sudden, that lead is now down to three again. And timeout will be called on the court. We'll be right back. Back here on LMC TV Varsity Sports. 5.15 left to go in the second quarter. And from what you've seen thus far, how do you think it's going to be for New Rochelle to come back after really having a poor start? Well, they've shown they can go on a bit of a run. They can, they've can. they been shooting a lot of the long balls. The problem is they haven't been able to nail a whole lot of them. They've made a couple. Yes. I think that might be a focus of theirs Definitely. to have time shoot around. Yeah, try to get some practice. And they've been shooting better lately, though. And great dribble in there. And that was... Ryan Moeller who put it in, and now some rustling going on. You want to break these players up? This is a rivalry game. Officials do a good job of it, and it's going to be going to Mermarin. And now we'll get a cheer from the fans here at Palmer Gymnasium in Mermarin High School. That's just good hard basketball right there. Moeller will throw it in. And gets the McMullen and finds Mazansky. Mazansky, throw it in. Two. That was Alex Lanny, and he's fouled there. No, now they're going to call it a travel. Are you kidding me? Some words being said now by some of the fans. T taken out by Elvante. Finds Finer. Three. Missed it. 
Big rebound by Lanny. Lanny will get to Mizanski. Now they're on a 3-2 breakaway, but they don't convert. Great well, save Fonte there. will take it up again. Inside, Finer, traveling, gonna be called the other one. That's one of those travels in the NBA they'd call a basketball move. <laughs> Outside of the NBA, that doesn't fly. Definitely, have you seen LeBron lately? Has LeBron dribbled this season? <laughs> Bounce Muller. Go inside, and that is going to be to Lanny, and then McMullen gets it, and wide open three for Mazanski. Just missed. Rebounded by Lanny, or almost, but it was taken away, and that was Derek Dorn doing it. And now they'll throw it out to Elefante, and Finer take maybe an up and down there. Nothing going to be called, and Finer will find an open man, but it's going to go out of bounds, and it's going to be Mermanic ball. One thing that's been troubling New Rochelle today, their passing has not been as crisp as it was in the first opening minutes of this game. Yeah, I think that's definitely correct. To say a couple of them have gone wrong in the last couple of minutes. 3.45 left to go in the half. Find Muller. Muller has Kalish. Top of the key. And now he'll find McMillan. Wide open. Three, no. Nearly got it in on the first bounce. Elefante takes it up. It's Elefante. Finds Burks and he'll reset it again. It's shot clock at 30, so they still have plenty of time. Burks now finding the ball, and that might be a backcourt violation. Nothing called. A great save, a mid-air save. Yes, and shoots just missed. And Ramon will take it coast to coast. Shoots. Just missed it, but he'll shoot two at the line. Oh, sorry, no, they're gonna call that on the floor. Did take a shot, but I guess the foul was committed before that. And try inbound, Mazanski ready to do it quickly. Jump ball, McMullen gets it. Three, way off there. And nope, it's gonna still remain with Mermarinick. Disbelief by Bill Murphy, the coach for the New Rochelle at Huguenots. The inbound it will be McMillan. Zansky passes up the three. Muller will save it. Zansky underneath. Oh, they're going to call that offensive foul, and that might have been the slowest one I've ever seen before. Looked like it was a travel. It looked like he ran into the New Rochelle player and kind of lost his footing a little bit. Perhaps that, but I mean, he was like falling down like a tower. I mean, he really took a long time to do that. Shoots for three, that is Burks, and he made it. We're tied. 2.15 left to go in the half. Big shot there for New Rochelle. Even it up, almost halftime. Get it in to Mullen and Kalish is going to try. Makes it. Big shot by Ben Kalish. And it's 26 24. Minute 50 left to go. Shoots for three to take the lead, and that was finer. And oh, baby, this one is in the possession of New Rochelle. They lead by one. Minute 41 left to go, and just about everyone in the whole entire gymnasium is into this one, Rob. And shoots. Just missed it. Rebounded by New Rochelle. And thrown away. Another one of those errant passes we were talking about with New Rochelle. And looks like we have a timeout on the floor. Yes, we do. And we'll, we'll discuss things and we'll be right back. New Rochelle leads by one. We're back. 
here on LMC TV Varsity Sports. 27-26, New Rochelle, and at a point, I think the Tigers had a 10-point lead, and they let it slip there in the second quarter, and still 126 left to go. They could take the lead into the locker room before half. Mullen will take it up a little slower than he normally does, and I throw it into Lanny, but he was well covered. Lanny, normally a better presence than he has been today, and he lets one go, and timeout is going to be called. Big one. And Durachel is going to get possession of the ball. Looks like Joseph Clark just jumped on it and immediately signaled for a timeout. He knew he couldn't do anything with the ball. Yeah, that was a big play, or else it probably would have been a jump ball, so I guess it was well a well-used timeout for the Huguenots. About a minute to go here in the first half, a 27-26 game. And going into halftime, Coach Carver has two kind of different things he can look at. He can look at the great run the Tigers got on at the beginning of the game to go up by 10 points, but then they kind of let things slip a little bit. So it'll be interesting to ask him after the game yeah. what he said to his team at halftime. I think it might be healthy to do a little bit of both, but I think it really might depend, actually, if they're leading at half or if they're not. You know, it's really a momentum factor. A lot of people look at that, even though it really doesn't matter how you're leading at halftime. You know, so I think it really would depend on that. But, yeah, that will definitely be interesting to ask him. I think a lot of it will depend on what he sees from his team in this last minute of play before the half. Yes. Minute 08 left to go. And after that very clutch timeout that was called, they're going to inbound it with a one point lead already. That's gonna be Elefante inbounding it and he'll take it up. Now he'll throw it to Finer, he's made a couple of threes tonight and finds teammate Dorn and those are underneath. Now shoots and one. That was Don Powell. It says Pow as he makes that one in. Right now, snuck in unguarded on the side there. Yeah, I think he checked into the game and I guess everyone said, is that your guy? He surely wasn't mine and he won't be able to make the three point play. So 50 seconds left to go for Marinick. It's into Mahler and tries for Kalish. Bauer going to be called. And Marinick will retain possession of the ball. And I guess now they're in the bonus, so Ben Kalish will shoot some free throws. first. It's a one and one and he makes the first. It's a big free throw. Cuts the lead now to two. Drills and up. It's a 29-28. Marinick only down one. And Powell get out to Finer and Finer just missed. Rebound and Powell into Finer. Good. So, just like that, they lead by three again. Ms. Anzio inbound into Mick Mullen. And you probably see the Tigers ball. wait for the last shot here. They might, although they have been very aggressive today. They even get that last shot off. Some very, very, very Fine defense being played right now by New Rochelle. They can't even get a pass off. They'll finally get into Mazansky. Mazansky just shoots a wild shot. Uh-oh, now it's Powell. And that was passed to Joseph Clark. And that will be the first half. 33-28, New Rochelle. We'll go to the locker room, and that will be the half. We'll be right back for second half coverage. Back here on LMC TV Varsity Sports. The halftime score is 33-28. New Rochelle over Mermarinick. Mermarinick did have a large lead earlier in the half. The 
about 10, but Rochelle took it right back and with some big plays on defense was able to even take the lead. So Elefante will take it up. They have switched sides now. Mullen on him. Takes the three, just missed it. And nearly rebounded, and finally they'll get a steal, and Mazanski can go quickly up court. Finds McMullen, foul, and they'll go to the line. He reached over the top there. Yeah, that was definitely not a legal play. And it's first shot. Good. I think he doubted that one for a while, but eventually went in. And the second one now. He missed that one. And it's a great pass up court. And Finer. Finer. And throws it very quickly. Tried to find Burtz and he missed him. And Mizanski now and Mermarinik are going to inbound it. Now only down four. Finds Orgulevix. And tries to get out to the side to Kiner and finds Mizanski a wide open layup and missed it. Timeout going to be called. And I guess they got just in time. That's the second time today where you've had a potential jump ball, but it was just a time it was called just before they could do anything about it. That clearly must be something that uh, Coach Murphy told his team, that we'd, we'd rather take the ball out of the timeout than, than have the jump ball situation. Yeah, definitely. Situation. Something you probably want to practice or at least get your team aware of because some coaches may say, I'd rather just have the jump ball, give them the possession, rather than wasting the time out. But Bill Murphy doesn't, doesn't think that's a good strategy, and I would agree with him. So Burtz will inbound it now, and he will inbound it into Elefante and Elefante throwing nearly off and a push will be called. That was on Brian Caden. We had Terrence Holden there who drew the foul. And Burtz will inbound it now. And he'll inbound it into the backcourt. Elefante. It's been big for them tonight, find Burt. If I find Finer, the three man, gets it back to Elefante. Burt will bump it outside. Just missed. Elefante nearly made another one. Big rebound by Alex Lanny. And we take it inside. Finds Lanny. And it was stolen away from him again. And now Burt. Good. So 35, 29. The lead is now six. New Rochelle's playing very physical inside. Lanny has to notice that when he gets that ball in his hands, he's got to hold on as tight as he can because they're just trying to rip it right out. Yeah, and they've done a very good job of that. Alex Lanny, normally much of an impact, but today he's been less of one than you would hope. Missed shot there by Marinick, and now they'll have a chance to extend on this already large lead of six. Missed it there and rebounded by Ernie Levitz. And he will try to throw it, or it seemed like he was thinking about throwing it to McMullen on the side, but he goes against it. Finds McMullen finally for three. Oh, nearly a four point play opportunity, but he'll be able to shoot three at the line. 5.42 left to go in the third quarter. Here for McMullen to cut the Tigers' deficit in half. Yes. Missed on that one. 
Free throws have been an issue for him today. He's already missed a couple. Here's his second try. Good on that one. 35-30. And good on his third. So two out of three there, not too bad. Not everyone in the NBA shoots 66%, so considering it's fine. And a foul is going to be called, or was it a travel? A little unclear, but from the reception by the Romernik fans, I think it's going to be their ball, and it is. Throw in to Harvey Levitz. And he'll try to dribble it up the timeline, and he finally will. And stolen away! And Harvey Levitz gets the ball, and a backcourt violation is called. He knew that was going to happen, but it was better than just giving them a three on one situation. Certainly, that's kind of cutting your losses, picking up the backcourt there. Yeah, John Finer didn't down it now. And they want a backcourt violation, no one's called. I think McMullen might have had a case there. He did catch it apparently from in front of it and they went back, but official either saw it and said play on or didn't see it at all. Shoots for three, good. That was Finer, punting the crowd. And it's 38-31. Love it. Try to find Lanny, he won't, but he'll get into Mazansky and a foul is going to be called on the court. I think this one's against Neuro. Yeah, I think it was. Um, someone fouled Matt Mazansky before he was able to take a shot there. Shoots for three. Good. Was that two or three? It might have only been two. It was three, actually. He just caught it, saw the opportunity, and made it. Definitely confident on that shot, but Finer, also a confident three-point shooter, but he missed that one. And a foul is gonna be called, and I think if they didn't commit that foul, you got Ovilevich wide open for the easy layup. He certainly did, so in that situation, maybe the foul's not the worst thing for New Rochelle. Ryan Caden will inbound it now for the Tigers. And they're going to stack and they'll inbound it into Mazansky. Mazansky tries to get up and now injury. And uh oh, that looks like Dre McMullen a little hurt. We'll be right back here on LMC TV Varsity Sports. Inbound to Mazansky. See Dory Levitt. And tries a high pass to Brian White. Brian couldn't get that one. And in that rebounded. That was a big rebound by Terrence Holden. Got this straight shot back. Orgy Levins will take it up and finds Ryan White. He can take a three, but he'll give it to number three. That was Mazansky, but he missed fire. Nearly got the rebound, and now it's four on one, and I think a necessary foul by Ryan White there, or else he may have had the bucket. Three forty-two left to go in the third quarter. So the Romantic fans trying to distract the free throw shooter, but not to any success on that one. I wonder if there are any numbers on whether that ever actually works. Uh, I don't know, probably, maybe if they really probably depends on the person, but obviously he didn't even hit the rim there, so it definitely isn't affecting him too much. 42-34. Find Orgy Lovings. And having trouble getting it past. Finally gets it to Lanny, and Lanny 
Big play. And there seems to be a clock operation issue. But there was a malfunction there of some yeah. type. The clock kind of went all haywire. The yeah. buzzer sounded for a, a few seconds. That was very weird, but it's one of the stranger stop. things I've seen here. Yeah, 3:36 left to go. I guess they'll address that uh, break for both the bo both teams, but they'll just get set again. Maybe someone hit the wrong button or something by accident. Down to Torgu Evans. Foul! by Joseph Clark. Timeout on the floor of Mamaronik, and I don't think Coach Carver had a more, really much of a choice here. Yeah, that erupted everybody in the crowd. He just took that one in by like a middle linebacker and took it to the house. Dunking the ball, which is not something you see very much in high school play, so that's obviously a big deal for him. The Tigers here need to regroup. They're down 10 now. Yeah, about a, with about a quarter and a half left to play. They need to kind of reverse their fortunes here, get back to the way they were playing earlier in the first half. Yeah, definitely. They did have that 10-point lead that I mentioned before. And really all you can say is what happened in these last couple of quarters. And it's 44-34. You know, still definitely a ball game. There's going to be 11 minutes and 25 seconds still left in the game. It's enough time to erase a 10-point deficit, but the pressure starts to come on when the clock gets on your mind. Yeah, and currently right now they're having some issues with the clock. Yeah, it's funny we mentioned the clock because uh, it's like, it looks like they're trying to get it all sorted out now. Yeah. Well, probably not really aware of what happened there, but I guess they figured it out, and play will resume soon. We'll be right back. Back here on CTV Varsity Sports. And technical foul was called. Oh, I guess he dunked the ball, which must not be allowed. And Ryan White is going to be taking two free throws, and he makes one out of two. So the Tigers will cut the lead to nine. I don't know. Maybe it was taunting after that, but I'm not really sure about that rule. Sometimes it's hanging on the rim. Yeah, I'm not sure if he that. was hanging there, but looks like we have another timeout. Yeah, timeout on the floor. Yeah, that's, that's strange. And I did see Bill Murphy yelling at um, Joseph Clark, and I wasn't really sure why, but now I see. Maybe he should have just put in the layup and moved on. You're allowed to dunk, but you're not allowed to hang on the rim. Where you draw the line there, I guess that's the ref's call, but. Yeah. I mean, he may have been hurt if he didn't grab onto the rim there, but I guess the ref saw it differently. Time out on the floor. Back here on LMC TV Varsity Sports. So after a huge slam dunk, a technical foul was called. You were a little confused on what happened. And Ryan White was able to put in a free throw, which has cut the lead now to nine. And the Tigers do have possession as well. Back in the name game now is McMullen after injury. And Orgy Levix misses it. by New Rochelle. And tips in the air. Intercepted by Mermarinik, and Mazanski now gonna take it to the bucket. Tries to draw the charge. Nothing was called. I'm pretty sure that was something, but apparently not. And stolen away by Mazanski. He tracked that one down. And, out. and shoots. Good. Ernie Levix 
Hux will lead to seven. Uh-oh, but like, good. They really were caught sleeping there. Big bucket, and I think everyone was cheering. Yeah, they were playing with a higher sense of urgency, and then it yeah. just kind of slipped down to the other end of the court before the Tigers could really catch up with them. Well, Malik Burt said, no one gonna cover me okay, and another New Rochelle player found him, and they put in the easy bucket. A couple unforced errors, the Tigers say, and they shoot him good. So they'll take it right back. McMillan turning the lead to seven. And again, nearly, and a big block was made. That was Alex Lanny. He thought it was clean. The ref said no, it wasn't. A lot of the fans here thought it was clean. They're not happy with the call. Yeah, and going to the line will be Sean Feiner. This place erupted after that. Yeah, call. definitely. Shoots. And missed it. Finally, the clapping had the effect. Hold on. That's not what he would say. He would say, I missed yeah, it. Yeah, maybe so, but the fans sure think so. On the second one. Makes it. 47-39. The Marinette down eight. And they'll slow it down now. All right, throw it in. McMullen was in a situation there on the side. And he'll finally find Mazansky, who'll take it up and go. Six point lead now for a newer shell. But quickly in transition again. Throws inbound, gets another. Mermaronic ball. Keep it up, shall we? They'll throw it into Lanny. Lanny catches it and puts it in. Four point lead now. Big eruption, the fans standing, as you can see in front of your camera. Timeout on the floor. Back here on LMC TV Varsity Sports. Vermeernik just a moment ago was down 10 points. But in a matter of minutes, now they're only down four. Energy is being felt in this gymnasium. And the Tigers with still nine minutes and 17 seconds left to go in the games. Plenty of time to come back. This looks like it's gonna be a good one to the finish, Rob. And it usually is when these two teams play. They've played it overtime, close fourth quarter finishes over the years. Malik Burt's didn't mount it. Find Clark, and will be set up again. Offensive foul! Big play by Jerry McMullen. Everything going the Tigers' way now. I think the official really wanted to call that. <laughs> it's like, it's going that way. <laughs> and Zansky gets the ball now. Goes up to the bucket. Foul call. You're right, Rob. It seems like everything is going their way. The last couple of whistles have all been to Mermarinick. Mazansky will have a chance to cut this lead to two. Nails his first. And the second now. It's also good. 47-45. It's a game of momentum. And it's clearly shifted back towards the Meredith. Jerusalem just wants to get out of this quarter. 52 seconds left. And a blocking foul is going to be called. Foul on the floor, and that's going to be on McMullen. 
been really in the action between all a lot of the close calls today. Some have gone his way and some haven't. Be inbounded now by Malik Burks. Burks inbounded into Powell. Powell. And Nwosu gets it in now. Shoots. Missed it. Clark had a shot in there, and they're going to call a jump ball. Big play by Matt Misansky under there to get possession. Still going to be possession arrow going to New Rochelle. And their lead has been cut to two. 39.3 seconds left to go in the third quarter. 23 on the shot clock, so still plenty of time to have a full possession. They have changed their minds and they're going to give the possession hour to Mamaronik. Maybe they, they had it wrong the whole time. So, regardless of the matter, it's going to be Mamaronik. Ball, and they have a chance to tie or either take the lead of the three. McMullen dribbles underneath, finds Lanny. Lanny, right back out. Orgy Levix to Mazansky. Mazansky will set it up again. 16 seconds left to go. Traveling is going to be called. And that was a big possession for the Tigers to tie or take the lead, but they can't convert there. It looked like they could get a good look on that one. They tried to reset it. They just yeah. never got it going on that one. Finds Burt for three. No, good. And that'll be the third quarter. So Mamaronik makes a big comeback, cutting the lead to two. But New Rochelle will get the last lap and will make it a four point lead, 49 to 45. End of the third quarter, fourth coming up next. We're back here on LMC TV, Varsity Sports. Mamaronik down four, 49 45. Fourth quarter action starting now. Powell will take it up and find Clark inside, and now they'll take a six point lead. McMullen dribbling slowly, finds Org 11, and he'll dribble in back outside now, and he'll. Take it past to Mazetsky for three, just missed. Rebounded by Lanny. Lanny, back out. Yeah, Jerry McMullen there for the three. He didn't see him, but he'll still draw the foul. We saw McMullen a half second sooner and got rid of that ball. That could have been a good look for him. Yeah, definitely. But he's still going to go to the line. He's going to shoot a one and one. Orgies first. He makes it. And his second. He made that one too, so 31 47. Powell passes up the three. Now we take one. He had Nooye open. No, sorry, Nuosu open, but he decided not to take it. Now Nuosu for three. Good, rattles in. That was Kaliki Nuosu making the bucket. Jerry McMullen and his Tigers now down seven points, 6.45 up to go. Zansky 
Settle it down. Murray Levick. Go pass up the shot and stolen away from him. Tries to steal it back. And another one of those saving timeouts, Rob. That's clearly what they've been coached to do is in a, in a situation where possession of the ball is hard to get, you finally get it, call the timeout, and keep the ball going your way. Well, you know, currently right now it's a seven-point game. That's three possessions, and there, that was three possessions right there on those timeouts they've called throughout this game that they have saved for themselves. So I think in these closer games, it's really a fine strategy that Bill Murphy is doing. And right now, up seven points. No way really to question it. it hasn't backfired. We'll be right back. We're back here on OMC TV Varsity Sports. 627 left to go. The home Tigers down seven points. But I think they may have a rally in them, or at least that's what the fans want to see. That's all they need is one big play to get the fans back into it, and then all this energy will fill the place. Yeah, they definitely had some runs in this game, so they are truly capable. Powell, try not to let that run start. And gets it into Clark, and Clark fumbled it, but it's going to be taken right back by Scarsdale. I mean, excuse me, New Rochelle. And foul is going to be called. Ball nearly and to make the bucket to a nine point game. New Rochelle building that lead back up now. So McMullen, 545 left to go in the game. He'll try to make it seven points and he does. That's the deficit right now. Gets it to Nuosu. Nuosu will find Birch, but he'll just pass it right back. And now Powell. Press could try a three now. Nuosu gets the very high lob pass. Sell it down now. Now trying to dribble in. Takes the shot. Good. 58 49. New Rochelle. 515 left to go. Back here on LMC TV Varsity Sports. The lead is nine for New Rochelle, but the Tigers possess it. Ryan Orgulak. He's taken up by Matt Mazansky. Fine, Ryan Orgulak. And finds Kalish, and Kalish shoots. Good. Ben Kalish with a big shot. Running the lead to only seven now. Nearly intercepted by Lanny, but a good play by Bird. And now he finds Elfonte and Wosu will settle up. Having a nice catch there behind the three point line. And passes up the three attempt for the two. And foul is going to be called on Mamaronik. They're not in the bonus yet though, so they'll have to throw it in. Knocked away there momentarily by Alex Lanny, but New Rochelle recovered it. Alfonte to Nuoye, sorry, Nuosu. Ten seconds left on the shot clock, so they have to find something here quickly. Nuosu for three. Nearly a big shot. Rebounded though by Clark and Clark. Backcourt violation. Yes. Summer Marinick. Only now down by seven, will possess the ball and have a shot with 355 
left to go in the game, still plenty of time to come back. Keep possession of your former Marinick, though. They'd like to get at least a two points here. Try to narrow that deficit down. They haven't had it down below seven in a while. Van Kalish inbound it, and he gets it into Mazanski. Mullen. Finds Mazanski and Mazanski inside to Ben Kalish who missed an easy one. And it's going to be Maronic ball. He dribbled it off the, the foot of Jerry McMullen, but it did end up being touched by Elefante, and it's going to be Maronic ball. Mazanski now. Get in there to Alex Lanny, who cuts that lead now to five. The comeback is officially on. The roaster will settle it down. I think right now New Rochelle just wants to slow it down a bit and come out of here with a victory, but they'll make a great pass in there. That was to number one, Burtz. I think you don't want to be too non-aggressive here or else it might come up, it might hurt you in the end. Ben Kalish. Oh, that was a great play by Ryan Orgelevich. But it, once again, it got to see Burks there. That's the second time today he's got back into the coverage there after a big bucket. And the lead, 62-55 now for New Rochelle. And foul is going to be called on the Huguenots. And I think they are in a one-on-one -on -one situation, so there will, no, now that it's actually two shots, so the Tigers will head to the line. So McMullen now will shoot two. Missed his first. It's 55-62, they're down seven. At least this way, if he can make this one, he will cut it to a two possession game. Can't deliver on that one either. So some big missed free throws there from Romarinek. 2.15 left to go, New Rochelle to be content on just wasting out the clock here. No need for New Rochelle to be aggressive or hurry up to the hoop. I think the Tigers may consider putting in some press here, as you'll see McMullen pressing up and got knocked down, but nothing was called. Seven seconds left, six seconds, five to shoot. And he'll shoot and missed it. Rebounded by Lanny and a foul is going to be called. He's gonna shoot two. They're down seven, minute 43 left. And I think they can definitely make a comeback here, but two missed free throws are really gonna cost them here. These are very, very vital points that they can't leave on the floor. They need Lanny to make at least one of these and then they need to play some strong defense and try to force a turnover quick. Yes, at least from a momentum point of view, you feel like you have a chance down two possessions. Here's the first. That one's good. So, 62-56, New Rochelle lead now. Alex Lanny, who has done a lot better in the second half, can cut this lead to five. So, 
They'll say it was good. I guess someone wanted to get a head start there, but apparently didn't affect the free throw. So LMC TV Varsity Sports, minute 43 left to go. And we'll be coming up next. Minute 43 left to go. Marinick down by five points. Still enough time, I think, for them to win. They're not going to really need a foul at this point. They got all the starters in there now. Really trying to press quickly here. And Mazansky, some tight pressure on Rosu, but he deals with it. And a foul is going to be called on Mazansky away from the ball. And is that going to mean free throws for them? It will. This is a one and one though, so if he does miss it, you know, that's essentially the same thing as a steal from Marinick. So this is a huge first free throw for Rosu and New Rochelle. Made it, that was clutch. 63-57 for Marinick. Down by six. This to make it a seven point lead. Good on that one too. So some clutch free throw shooting by Nuosu will give New Rochelle a seven point lead. A minute 22 left to go. Tigers are gonna need a hurry now to come back and win this game. Intercepted. Burt knocked away by Mazansky, and they're going to call a foul. <laughs> Burt was going to dunk it that time, I'm pretty sure. Oh, I think he was thinking about it. Yeah, maybe. Coach wouldn't have been too happy, though, but he'll be able to get two from the charity stripe here. A minute 12 left to go. Seven point lead already for New Rochelle, and it's starting to look like their night. No good on the first. And the second. It's good too. Sorry, I missed the first one, but makes the second. So eight point lead now. And Marinick gonna need a, a big bucket, I think, on this possession. And can they get it? No, they cannot. But will they get the rebound? They won't. And 56 seconds, but intercepted. McMullen makes it and one. That was humongous. We now six in the Kakoti to five. It's a good start for Romero. They still need a lot of things like that to happen, but that's how you get a late rally started. Well, they're going to be able to foul here, so there's 53 seconds left to go. So New Rochelle misses a couple of free throws. Them only being down five is definitely not the kiss, the kiss goodbye. Makes that one. So three-point play off of the intercepted steal and a foul is going to be called so 46.1 seconds left to go now they'll go for the free throw line you know the shot clock resets at 30 seconds so if Marinick could only be down six if Nuosu would miss one of these and gets the rebound. If they could go down court in less than 16 seconds, they would have a shot to stop them on defense and then have another shot to win the game. But he's not going to miss that first one. It's been very good on the free throw line today. And now New Rochelle is just going to send their players back and they're going to try another free throw. This to make the lead seven for New Rochelle. It will be. So 46.1 seconds left to go. Quick play from Marinick now. And for three for Mazansky. Oh, that was huge. 
34.1 seconds left. Timeout for Mermarinick. And, you know, down only four now, Rob. I think they're really officially back in this game. They're within striking distance, without a doubt. They still need a couple things to go their way. They have to have New Rochelle miss a couple free throws. Yeah, definitely. But I think if you were to miss that and they had to foul New Rochelle again, that might have might have needed to be a miracle for them to come back. But now I think it's definitely in possibility for them to come back here. They certainly kept themselves in the game, and that's what you want to do late in the fourth quarter is keep yourself in the game and then hope something good happens. Yeah, definitely. 34.1 seconds to go. Yep. Should be an interesting finish to this one. Yeah, I can't guarantee you who's gonna win, but I can guarantee you it's gonna be pretty interesting, Rob. It'll be thrown in by New Rochelle and by the look of the defensive positioning for the Tigers, they are going to try to press and Grosu gets it, good. Some people want to travel and he actually inbounds it off the back of Nuosu and a foul is going to be called, he's going to be able to shoot too. Some big free throws here for Mazansky. His team down six points. Missed his first, and that one was big. Can he make his second, though? That was good too, so I right, missed the first one, but it's a five-point lead now, and Mermarinick, some tight defense there with Mullen trying to knock the ball away, and he actually did, but the ball went out of bounds. 26 seconds left to go in the game. And they'll inbound it now to Nuosu, and he's made several free throws, so perhaps not the person you want to foul, and... I think the Tigers, they know that they would prefer to foul someone else. Head to the line to shoot two. The Tigers really need him to miss these. Yeah, definitely, they're... Only down five, so even if he only misses one, they'd be able to cut the possession to three with a lead, but finally misses one. Rosu looks in disbelief. So the Tigers, he can miss another one. They would really be in business here. And another one on the line. Maybe the crowd getting into his head a bit. Lanny, pass it out to Mizanski. Well, he tried the three, he'll try a circus layup and they miss it and they're gonna try another foul. So uh, they missed two big free throws, but they couldn't convert. Well, they really needed to pick up a couple points there. Yeah, they... Mazansky trying that shot, just couldn't roll in. Yeah, I think he passed up a three, tried to make a move and tried to lob it underhanded in. It actually, I don't think it was a bad shot, it nearly did go in, but couldn't convert, so going to the line now is going to be Joseph Clark to try to seal the game for New Rochelle. 12.2 seconds left to go. First one, good. 70-64 now. This to make it a seven point game and in all likelihood seal the deal for New Rochelle and he makes it. McMullen, it's an Orgy Levins for three, missed it, rebounded, 
and they'll be able to waste out the, the clock here as time's going to expire. So a big win for New Rochelle over Mermarinick, 71 to 64. Post game coming up next. Big one for New Rochelle today. What do you think some of the keys were to the game, Rob? Well, it's a, it's a game of runs. Mamarinic got on a good run. New Rochelle got on a good run. Mamarinic got on a good run. So it's just a matter of New Rochelle had longer runs. And they were able to, once they had the lead, they were able to kind of hold Mamarinic off from catching up from that deficit they were down. So that's really it. They were able to just, they got the lead and they were just able to keep it. All right, thanks. All right, so for Robert Moretti, I'm Robert Reamer. Tonight, good night, everybody. Thank you.